So hi everyone and welcome to EduQuest. My name is Kirsten Winkler. I'm the founder of EduQuest and as every week we are on the search for better education. Well, who better to invite than uh, Farboot Nivi, of, uh, founder of uh, Grocket. Um, and uh, let's talk a little bit how he sees the education space uh, evolve and all the exciting things that um, are going on at the moment. So Fab, very happy that you accepted my invite and to, to have you on, finally, I have to say. <laughs> very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. All right, so I already said you founded Grocket in 2006. You're also very um, involved, we can say, with Startup Weekend EDU. And now you don't want to say you moved on, but uh, you are now doing Learners. So a lot of uh, things and maybe to that we are all on the same page. Uh, maybe you can take us through a little bit this, this evolution, uh, starting with Grocket. What was great back then and what did you see as an opportunity or a chance coming from a teaching background and sort of how it has evolved into what you want to do with learners now? Great. Thanks. I'd love to. Uh, so yeah, before I started Rocket, I was an educator for about 10 years and uh, the chief instructional design in, in my classroom that I tried to implement um, and implemented was social learning. So a lot of students learning from each other and the teacher facilitating that. So it's, it's not like the teacher sitting in the corner doing nothing. Uh, in fact, the teacher is fully engaged, you know, from beginning to end. Uh, and the students, more importantly, are fully engaged from beginning to end of class. Uh, so, you know, there was always some lecture component of the class, but I tried to get that to be as minimal as possible and have the students uh, in an organized and structured way uh, in, in interact and, and um, engage with each other to uh, push their own understanding of things. And so, um, you know, a few years ago, sorry, go ahead. No question? I thought you had a question. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> okay. So then a few years ago, you know, as everything social was happening online, uh, and the Facebooks and the MySpaces and all those things, uh, it seemed like a, one social thing that wasn't really happening online was social learning. Um, I mean, it's certainly happening, I mean, the Internet is uh, social learning as much as it can possibly get. It just wasn't, you know, formalized too much. I think one of the great examples in human history of social learning is Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, uh, Wikipedia was um, part of the first big things that hit the internet, you know, 15 years ago as the internet was coming to life. Um, and, you know, before, uh, they, before, you know, 15 years ago, you know, a little bit more than that, nothing we knew was online. And then the online world appeared. Uh, and then very quickly, um, people said, let's get everything we know online and share it directly with each other. Uh, and so, so, for example, Wikipedia is born. Uh, and someone on the other side of the planet can type something in Wikipedia and hit the submit button. Uh, and one second later, I'm learning directly from that person 10,000 miles away. Um, so throughout human history, technology has unleashed social learning, um, first in the form of just writing itself. Um, and then, you know, much later, things like the printing press uh, and then the internet. Um, these technologies make it easier for people to share knowledge directly with each other. Um, and so, you know, like I said, 15 years ago, nothing we knew was online. And when Wikipedia came around, uh, you know, um, you remember like I do, if you wanted to load a 200 kilobyte image on your screen, uh, you sat there and watched it load in one line at a time. Absolutely. Half yeah. minute, right? <laughs> so when Wikipedia started, you know, there's two big things that happened since Wikipedia's early days. One, technology and bandwidth have rapidly changed. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a lot, sorry, not live, but just a, a HD video was not an option for, for Wikipedia. But even if HD videos, uh, the technology and the bandwidth existed 15 years ago, there was nothing online in HD video. There was nothing to learn. So Wikipedia also didn't have the option of sort of looking to what already exists online to help sort of start collaboratively generating this sort of these knowledge pools. Um, so today, though, 
Uh, we're in a world where um, basically anything you want to learn is online. Um, it's probably an HD video. It's probably free. And it's probably taught by the number one person in the world that knows that subject. Um, that's a pretty massive coup in 15 years of the sort of um, powers that be in the world of human knowledge management. Who controls how that knowledge is disseminated and shared and distributed. So now you can go to Udacity or to YouTube and take a course on a lead startup from Steve Blank, the eminent, you know, one of the preeminent scholars in the world on this um, topic, and it's free. Uh, so Learnist came about because, you know, over, you know, Learnist is not quite a year old now. We launched it in June of last year, but sort of the year prior to that and the year leading up to that, I was thinking constantly on this issue of like everything we know is online. What to do with this information? And then additionally, you know, I hear a lot of startup ideas in the tech space from folks. And I was just, despite the fact that everything we know is online, an HD video taught by the best person in the world for free, I was still getting, I was constantly getting pitched these ideas for a website where teachers can upload video of themselves teaching the subject matter and that we'd find the best one and float that up to the top. And it's like, there was this disconnect between, um, and, and it's because this whole everything we know is online happens so quickly mm -hmm. that nobody, people still are trying to think that we need to do that. And of course we do, not every single thing we know is online, as we learn more things, granted those things get put online first now, right, as we learn new things, uh, maybe one day they become printed on paper somewhere. Um, but this is really remarkable. Even five years ago, you couldn't say everything we know was online in HD video because there was barely HD video five years ago. You know, Khan, for example, Khan Academy, I think, is part of an incredible wave of people putting everything we know online in HD video. And so, sitting with this, you know, problem over and over again, what to do? What do we do with the fact that everything we know is online? Um, you know, at some point, you know, after sort of looking at how Facebook works, how Twitter works, looking very deeply at Udemy, looking very deeply at Udacity and Coursera and all these models, um, and then sort of like getting this, um, Pinterest was a little bit of an aha moment from the perspective that, um, it was one, like, what Pinterest did for me was kind of provide me a hook on the user experience because, like I said, the easy part had to be there. Um, I think part of the issue with some of these existing sort of online uh, LMSs and content creators and course creators, the easy is not the word you would apply to them. Mm -hmm. totally. Most of the time, it's like, oh, you want to teach a course on this subject? Well, go record 100 hours of video and spend 500 hours recording it and editing it. <laughs> and then, like, 12 weeks later, your course is up. So we're not going to get everyone to share what they know if that's how they have to do it. So. When I saw Pinterest sort of like do this thing where they're like, oh, we can curate the web and grab a little image and just make it really easy for someone to just grab a URL and drive that all the way to a complete item on the web. Um, obviously, Pinterest is quite different. And one of the things that we do uh, very differently than, than Pinterest, yet sort of still sort of um, inspired by this uh, one URL only action that the person has to take is we have these special learning types on learners. There's about 23 of them right now. Uh, things like YouTube videos, everything mm -hmm. from show me's to SoundClouds, Wikipedia articles, live view streams, you name it. We want to let make it super easy for people to mash up the web, not just images on the web, not just text on the web, but technology and content, right? Um, and so if you take a URL from SoundCloud or Wikipedia or YouTube or Ustream or any of these things, that's all you have to do as a user. We take it, we sort of intelligently look at that page and it's like, oh, it's a Ustream page, let's handle it this way. And we'll embed the, the Ustream video right there. It's on the web, it's on your iPhone, it's on the iPad, and literally the user copied and pasted one URL. Um, so that was sort of like the, the genesis of Learnist, and we, and we sort of prototyped it in, in, internally. Um, and one of the ways I tested it was just ask if I knew to share a handful of web URLs to teach a certain subject. Um, and I emailed a bunch of people. And 
I was sort of expecting people to kind of like, you know, a handful of people would get back to me the next day. Mm -hmm. um, and in like 30 minutes, you know, 25, 30 out of the 50 people I emailed replied to me at the top and like the half a dozen web URLs they would use to teach it. So I was like, wow, if that's all it takes, then you can make it really easy for people to share what they know. Um, and so, you know, long story short, then we start, we just kept working on it and things, uh, one thing sort of, uh, uh came after another and, uh, you know, we're, we're cranking along with the, the beta out on the web in June and a couple of iOS apps out in September and mm -hmm. we're just working away on it. Sorry for an extremely long-winded non-stop answer. No, it was an extremely, uh, fascinating one to, to see, uh, how this thought process, um, was, uh, happened and, um, I would, uh, supposedly, um, having had a look at uh, your work and also what you did with Grocket, um, in, in some aspect, um, it has uh, certainly helped as well as I found it quite fascinating that throughout the, the history of Grocket, you um, took the time and um, also concentrated on little side projects. Sometimes it was a, let's say, innovative business model, what nobody else did that you, um, well, uh, said, okay, we don't charge for... Um, uh, for 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 it um, the way everybody else, but we we try to do it exactly the other way around actually. Yeah. Or um, I remember that you took um, YouTube videos and you built something around the comments, and that That's teachers right. could then um, and we do interact a lot of and, and yeah <laughs> yeah. So um, was that actually through? Um, experimenting with different features, having constantly, um, well, thinking you were speaking about HD and putting all the, the knowledge on the internet. Uh, has it helped and sort of, um, learners evolved? You, 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 you found I need to do something new with learners and don't want to say that Rocket is finished, but it is not something we would simply um, sort of uh, modify Grocket into or um, sort of spin it out a little bit but still yep. have it under the Grocket brand or what were right. where your so, feelings about that? Sure, great. So Grocket, you know, the test prep stuff, the collaborative group, you know, students teaching each other to prep test still runs. Uh, it's still generating revenue uh, and uh, it kind of runs on its own. <laughs> There's very uh, little sort of the development bandwidth applied to it anymore just to kind of make sure it stays up and, and, and running. Uh, so and you so would basically great. say that's mature as it is now and you are ready and you felt you want to move into your next thing. That, that's exactly right. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is Learnist wasn't possible when Rocket started. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know? hmm. So in, in, and to your point, instead of sort of like just iterating on Grokit to sort of try and accommodate the current state of the world and the current state of problems in sort of education and content and media and these pieces. Um, you know, like I said, we prototype a lot here, and most of the prototypes never see the light of day. Uh, and Grokit Answers, um, which was um, something that we did uh, where basically you can timestamp Q&A in mm -hmm. inside of videos, was a, was one of those things that made it out the door, quite frankly, and there were many more that never quite saw the light of day, like I said. And then Learnist, uh, Learnist was the same thing. It was a 24-hour-long um, um, prototype that me and one of my developers did um, that is actually still existing at some URL on the web that I won't share with anybody. Uh, but, you know, it's like we took a stab at just sort of throwing it together and we showed it to a few people and then we spent a little bit more time on it and... Um, I think it's, it's it's one of those things that just for most people was like obvious, you know, and it came to a point where it's like, look, uh, if you guys don't do this first and quickly, someone else is going to come do this because this is definitely happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's and there's other folks out there that are doing some similar things uh, as well. So I think clearly the world is calling for this and great reaction from teachers. Um, so and the nice thing is from teachers and non-teachers alike. Uh, and, and to me, I wanted to make something that was applicable to learning, not necessarily institutionalized education and not necessarily to just informal education, but just to the actual
process of learning and sort of generalizing as much as possible. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Uh, as you said, it's for both educators and non-educators alike, and the response was pretty um, amazing so far in, in such a short time. So um, don't, don't, don't know, do you focus on somebody who is learner's audience? And what would you say, why are people so um, enthusiastic about it? Why do they like it so much? Sure. So, you know, um, we just closed the round of financing led by Discovery Communications. Yeah. Uh, and I, and, I, and I, um, the reason, you know, uh, strategic um, investments like that in the startup world are usually to be avoided, quite frankly. <laughs> um, unless there's a, a very high level of uh, overlap in vision and mission. Um, and Discovery, which is, you know, like a multi-billion dollar company, Global reach. I think they touch some one billion people on the planet. Um, they're all about curious people, people who are curious and curiosity. And I think that's that's why there was such a strong overlap with what we're doing because that's what Learnest is about. We're all as humans curious. We're all artists, as it were, like artists or scientists. We're learning machines. We're learning organisms. We're sort of the heart. Our hardware is built. That way, software is built that way, uh, and so that's who Learnist is for, and, and that's who Discovery is for. Uh, and you know, there are billions of people on the planet who are curious and want to learn and want to share what they know. Um, and you know, there needs to be a, 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 the easiest way possible to do it to get as many people doing this possible. And, and quite frankly, you know, we see something around you know um, 10 percent or a little bit more of our users are creating content. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, isn't like Instagram, but it's, you know, a uh, thousand X what Wikipedia is, mm -hmm. um, because it's, you know, it's about making it super easy. Um, and not that Wikipedia should change at all. Um, it's just that, you know, our, our model is, you know, probably the most, uh, the most uh, added type of learning on Learnist are, are Wikipedia art. <laughs> so <laughs> Wikipedia doesn't need to really change. Uh, I, I don't think it's just that you know we're not trying to copy them. We're trying to get something that's a little bit more uh, popular in terms of a content creation platform. Can you share? Uh, I mean, it's early on, but uh, can you share a little bit of the vision how um, learners might actually be embedded or add on the experience um, of uh, discovery? Don't know documentaries, for instance. Uh, oh, sure. Yeah, so um, you know we're um, deep in conversations with Discovery around how to um, you know partner together beyond the investment, of course. Um, so that can mean distribution for Learnus, you know, through their different media properties. Uh, they have a dozen or so media properties, uh, and then obviously some more interesting sort of product uh, partnerships, uh, where you could, for example, you know, uh, sort of be watching something on Discovery mm -hmm. and find sort of the web version or the continuation of it or learn more like imagine you're watching a um, little know, bit like what we see with the second screen like when you watch a game you want the statistics exactly. uh -huh. the second screen the tablet that you have in your lap on the couch while you're watching uh, could sort of help amplify your experience you know for folks like discovery um, you know it's not likely that there will be too many learners users that are not also discovery users right mm -hmm. I mean, they're touching a billion or so people yeah. on the planet it's going to take me a while <laughs> to get past that right um, so i think for, you know folks like from their perspective is they want more to share of day mm -hmm. they want more of your all time and you know they'd rather you um, Sort of continue to engage with their content when you're, you know, standing in a line uh, at, the, at the at the grocery store. And, you know, you you had watched the Discovery Show earlier, so maybe you're still thinking about it, and you're sort of playing with the, those web assets mm -hmm. now. Um, so I, I think that's why this makes sense for them. You know, it's an opportunity to increase their share of day of people's lives. Definitely. For you, on the other hand, um, if we look at uh, the quality and also interesting things around uh, like next-gen televisions, uh, for you, 
Um, yeah, if right. we if we think learn is becoming like in the center of people's homes and not only um, when they wanna be educated or learn about something is of course a very fascinating opportunity um, as well. Yeah, absolutely, we you know we we see a world where. Uh, you know, and you're watching the news and they give their little Twitter handle down at the bottom, but they would also give their Learnist handle. So, you know, whatever news topic they were talking about, you know, you could continue learning more about it uh, on their Learnist board or on their Learnist profile. In a previous answer, you, um, well, not surprisingly, um, told us that uh, you get uh, pitches from other founders every day. And um, I mentioned in the intro that you're also very involved in Startup Weekend EDU. Why was it fascinating for you to um, sort of uh, help other people? Was it is it really interesting for you um, bringing more teachers into founding startups or being a co-founder at least? Or do you see that um, education, uh, online education, let's say, as um, simply should get more attention than it already maybe has had last year and probably yeah. this year? I try not to do anything that doesn't have multiple reasons to do it. Just because that I need to kill as many birds with each stone as possible. Um, so in the case of Startup Weekend, it, uh, EDU, there was really no different. A, a lot of reasons to do it. Um, you know, some of them are like uh, I feel like to the extent that the um, what's happening in this space affects everybody in this space, mm -hmm. um, and also. Um, I, I think we're a lot more there now, but like, you know, Startup Weekend EDU is uh, like almost two years old now, I think. Uh, and, you know, in the year before that, so like three years ago, I still felt like it was a lot of talk in the space mm -hmm. around the revolution and the ed tech reform and the changes and startups and ed tech startups and ed tech entrepreneurs. Um, and uh, we wanted to sort of. Um, I didn't want to languish in this uh, area of talk, and not, and not like we, by any you know stretch of the imagine, even the imagination, take credit for making it more about action. We just want to participate. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we want to participate in that sort of movement from talk to action, uh, and I think we, we effectively did that. Uh, and then also, you know, there were so many people um, coming up in the space, and a lot of them, I think, coming necessarily or an entrepreneur or technology background that um, I didn't want them to sort of like uh, trip up because of that. So we wanted to kind of give them access and a onboarding experience into the world of ed tech entrepreneurship. And I think it sort of like helps the whole space, which helps us as well. So what is then better, um, entrepreneurs starting something in education, starting a business in education, or giving a teacher, or let's say more broadly, educator, um, some money and tell him or uh, support him in building a startup? Uh, yes. I the, the best situation is um, either if, if in that one individual there's not like sort of a great entrepreneur, slash business person and a great educator slash you know learning <laughs> expert. Uh, you get two of them and you partner and you, you can't do these things on your own. You need you need a team around you uh, that is as good as you, that is as bought in as you, uh, and and then you can do it. And in, in, in fact, I think this is one of the, the the problems in this space a little bit right now is that there's been such an effort to sort of turn the teacher into an entrepreneur. Uh huh. Um, I think the effort should have been putting, but should have been put into getting these teacher entrepreneurs partnered with business entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, and, and not because they're incapable of any aspect of it, but because there's too much work to do, and that educator entrepreneur should probably be focused on the sort of product and learning aspect of the organization, and the partner should be focused on the business aspect of it, and the whole organization is more likely. To Succeed, um, I think, in this way, and um, and you know the sort of founders dating style. Um, I'd like to see a lot more of that. Okay, then last question. Actually, what do you think are the exciting things for 2013? Um, 
can of course um, refer a little bit to to learners if you want um, or to the education ecosystem in general yeah so I think if you look globally um, you know outside of the United States outside of the world of k-12 and we really like learning at a global level um, not like I, I, I'm coming up with this but I, I think it's the the smartphone is still um, mm -hmm. probably the most important thing happening um, the sort of hundreds of millions of smartphones that will come online this year um, means hundreds of millions more learners uh, with learning at the tip of their finger, literally. Uh, and, and so, to the extent that there uh, are applications and tools that sort of are, are ready, waiting for those people, I think they're going to be voraciously consumed. And I think, quite frankly, this will be... Um, a much bigger year in the world of uh, educational technology and learning technology than last year, and I think there's still a lot of upside. I don't think we're anywhere close to finished. Uh, and, well, when we look uh, at your activities, and of course from our um, like listeners and, and viewers, uh, you're really a persona in education, so all, all over the place, but uh, where would you say, um, well, we should definitely recommend people check out uh, Learnest um, if they want Grocket as well. Uh, about you, what's the best uh, way Twitter possible probably to, to yeah, follow, follow your? Me on hmm. our food. It's probably the best way to do it. Um, or follow me on Learnest, and you can learn about all the things I like teaching about. Excellent. So, Fab, thank you so much for taking the time. It was really fun learning um, about Learnist and um, all the exciting things you are up to. I lament not having been in France to do the interview in person. <laughs> um, maybe, but you went last year, so maybe yeah, Startup probably. Weekend EDU London. But um, Okay, sounds good. <laughs> so, thank you so much. Thank you so Take much. Care. Bye. Yeah.